All right, welcome to my garage. Uh, I thought I'd talk you through some of my favorite maintenance hacks that I use at home and some of my favorite bike setup hacks. All right, first one, tubeless tires. I love almost everything about them, the way they ride, the way they you know, seal little holes. But the one thing I do hate is when it comes time to switch tires, then it can be quite a messy affair, but I have got a top tip here for recycling your tubeless sealant and basically trying to make the least amount of mess possible, but also use the same sealant if you can in the new tire. So here goes. So take one side tire off and obviously you can see inside there is all the sealant. So the key to this is trying to get this tire off without throwing that sealant all over the floor and all over your shoes. Because actually some of this sealant can ruin your clothes as well. I found that out in the past. When you get exploded on by it, uh, it's actually really hard to wash out your clothes. So uh, gently take that off. Try and keep all the sealant in the bottom of there. Hook that somewhere over my bars. It might make a little bit of a mess there on my bike, but I'll clean up afterwards. And get my fresh tire ready. So stick your freshie on the wheel and get one side of the bead onto the rim. I guess you probably know all that stuff, but the, now the tricky part, the hack, is to try and get that sealant from there to there. And by the way, this only really works if your sealant is in good condition. Sometimes if it's old, it can go kind of watery or lumpy. This looks super fresh. So I've tried different tricks. I've used a syringe, that's really messy, don't work. Uh, so what you need is this. No, not really the chain cleaner. What you need is an aerosol can. I find this is the best way by far. So you get the lid, decent size one, and actually that'll sort of uh, conform to the inside shape of that tire. So you just razz that around, scoop out your sealant. Uh, obviously you get the bigger bits first, so you get a decent sort of level of it. And pour that into your fresh tire, making sure you've got a nice sort of cup in there so it doesn't go all over your rim. The great thing about these is how much you can get out. So even though I've got like the majority at the bottom, you can see all around the inside tire, there's still sealant stuck to it. And this, like I say, it sort of really fits the shape of the tire. So I can run it all the way around and it's still getting loads of it off the inside of the tire. Also then this tire, if it's not too old, you might want to keep this and use it again for something else. So you don't really want to leave them full of that horrible stuff because it will go hard over time and you get like a, I guess a heavier tire because it's just that rubbery stuff sticks inside. So you can really clean it out using a simple aerosol cup. And the best thing is, it's not even messy at all. Whilst I'm on the tubeless thing, uh, you might find, oh, here's some of my old valves. You might find older valves, they get full of sealant eventually. So if you go to pump up your tire, it feels like you have to push really hard on your pump to get any air in, or if you're letting out uh, air, then it just comes out really slowly. So what you need to do is clean them out, basically. Let me try and find one that is a bit old and dirty. Oh, there's one. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. So this stuff, glue and sealant remover, or sort of any sort of solvent, I guess petrol will probably work quite well as well, to get inside there. So you can take your valve out. So if you unscrew the end, you'll see inside, oh, like if I put that up to light, I can see it's kind of gunked up. It's almost full. So the diameter is really reduced. So just spraying some of that stuff in will work, but it doesn't always do the whole job. So what I'll do is definitely get some in there to get it doing its trick. And then what I like to do is get some wire. So this is actually from my motocross days, it's uh, grip wire, but any sort of, I don't know, anything nice and thick. This is kind of, it's really quite stiff. So basically I need to get this in there and sort of just jiggle it around and clean out all that old rubbery sealant that's just stuck in there. Uh, and if, you, if it's getting really full, it can make it really difficult as well to try and seat your tyre. If you're not getting good airflow through, then when you change your tyres tubeless, you're not going to be able to get that sort of the bead of the tyre to seat properly on the rim and inflate. There you go, I can see it's coming out. This one, all right, it's not a hack, it's an absolute bodge. It's for emergency use only. If you haven't got an 8mm Allen key and maybe, I don't know, your pedal comes loose mid-ride, so you've got to do something about it, because if you leave it, it's just going to rip out all the threads. Did you know that 6 add 2 is 8? Quick maths. So, 
You might not carry an 8mm everywhere, but you might have a 6 and a 2. And you can jam them, basically, both of them, into the 8mm cavity. And it will do the job. I wouldn't want to try and undo something tight with this. I wouldn't want to use it on something delicate, like that 8mm on my pivot on this bike. But for emergency use only, maybe a 5 and a 3 will work as well. I've never tried it, but a 6 and a 2 definitely does. It is far from perfect, but it may just get you out of the fix. Nowadays, you can get loads of different options on tools and uh, different ways of mounting them to your bikes. That one, go under your saddle, a strap like that. We've got some tubeless plugs. Can go kind of anywhere, but some bikes don't have the luxury or the space to fit these things. So my next hack is basically to use a Velcro strap. I've got a couple of these. That one is actually for tubes. This one, I'm not sure. It just appeared. Basically, it's got one of those kind of loops at the end. Velcro strap. So. Really nice, neat way of doing this is to grab that strap underneath the bottle cage between the two bolts that hold that on, and then back under. You might actually need to loosen off your bottle cage to do this because it's kind of pinching it. So I will do that. So then you thread it back underneath, and now you've got a loop, and that is super handy for something like a CO2 canister that isn't going to stick out very far at all. It's not getting where you bottle. And then you've got another loop on the other side, so. I'm going to stick some tubeless plugs over there as well. Right, this one is a homemade uh, chain cleaning brush, I guess you call it. So I would use two old toothbrushes. I guess stiffer brushes would be the best, stiffer bristles, should I say. Stick them together, so bristles go like that, and then get your trusty gaffer tape or zip tie or whatever and just strap them together, so like that. And then basically you can just slide your chain into there using a bit of chain cleaner as well. Raz chain round, hey presto, there's a clean chain and a completely free tool. Right, occasionally you need to clean out the bladder of your hydration pack. Uh, more often if you use sort of energy drinks now, I tend to use water most of the time, so they don't get that scummy if I'm honest. But, so I've got a couple of tips. These are from Doddy over on the tech channel. So you can use either a baby sterilizing bottle uh, cleaning liquid, or actually denture cleaner. You get these little tablets. Apparently if you drop those in water inside your bladder, obviously give them a good wash around. You can use pipe cleaners as well to get into that bite valve. And even on Doddy's video, it shows you how you use a, an old coat hanger, cut it up to fit inside the bladder to hang it to dry it out properly afterwards as well. If you are a GoPro user, then obviously they're brilliant for recording footage. But the one thing they're not so good at is the audio. When you're riding fast, the wind noise on these things can get pretty bad. So there's a couple of different ways of making that better. The first one actually is to go into the settings. If you go in, down to the pro settings bit, and you can go where it says raw audio, normally that's on off. Uh, what I do is I put that to high. Basically that turns off the software that's inside here that basically tries to get rid of wind noise, isn't that great? So it turns that off, also gives you a raw audio track so you can process that afterwards. And then what you need uh, is what I'm reliably informed is in the film industry called a dead cat. It's basically what they actually call it, a wind jammer. So you can buy these kits. I bought this off Amazon for like 15 quid, so pretty cheap. Basically you get these fluffs and a sticky patch so you can cover up the microphone. So on the front, you've got some there and also one on top. So super nice, easy thing to do, and it will make a big difference to the audio. Also makes it look really cool, like it's got a moustache. But what you want to do is once it's on, make sure that you can't see it, obviously. It's a tiny GoPro one, but you can give these a little trim, give them a little haircut. Make sure these things don't sort of blow in the wind and then, like I say, get into your shot. There you go, pretty good. You can buy these sort of foamy covers made for GoPros, you'll find them on Amazon, uh, which are pretty good, but they're not as good. So basically it fits over the top. Let me show you it, super easy. So you can still mount it, obviously. Mounts will come out the bottom and you can fit it around the lens like that. But they're not as good. You can still hear some of the wind noise. And the most annoying thing about that is that you can't tell that your GoPro is rolling. So you might press you know, go and you've got a red light flashing, but actually you can't see it because that's in the way. So actually I much prefer using these dead cats. 
why this is one of my favorite maintenance tips. I think because removing disc bolts is just a pain in the bum. Like I hate it, it's a horrible job. So what I do is use my drill. Uh, basically, you need to stick it on the screw setting. So you haven't got it on crazy torque or anything like that. Uh, and then set that, what do I call it? Contention ring, accordingly. Then, there you go. makes a horrible job really fast. What I will say is when I'm putting the rotor back on, I'll turn that tension thing right to the very minimum and get the screws all the way in, and then I'll do uh, the final torque by hand. All right, there's some of my favorite workshop hacks. Uh, yeah, definitely hit the subscribe button if you want more mountain bike videos, and let me know any of your hacks down below in the comments.